Okay, today let's answer your calisthenics and handstands question. So number one, uh, best progressions for press handstand and how long it would take to achieve the press. Now for the press handstand, we need a combination of strength, flexibility, balance, and then to put it all together, we need to understand and have a certain level of skill. And each individual has a different level of strength, flexibility, balance, and skill, and we all learn at a different rate. We have different limb lengths and we have different training history. So it's impossible to tell you exactly how long it's gonna take you to achieve the press. However, most people will achieve it for between six months and 24 months but it obviously depends massively on what level you already have of each of these things. In terms of the best exercises, we wanna be doing something for the top of the movement. So that's gonna be your handstand balance. If your handstand balance is already good, we need to be working on the slight underbalance position and being able to hold that with control because that's where we're gonna stack the press handstand on top of. The bottom position is more about flexibility, conditioning of the bottom section where we try and get the hip on top of the hands. So that could be a combination of straddle flexibility, forward fold flexibility, and then just conditioning load in that position. The concentric will normally be a partial range, and then the full range of motion would be a type of slow eccentric press handstand, either back to wall, chest to wall, or freestanding. And then it's very important you're doing the right ones for your current level. Add them all together, it equals the press. And then when we're working towards any skill, we wanna try and minimize these as much as possible. So ideally, you'd already have the bottom position, you'd already have the top position because your handstand balance is really good, and you just need these two exercises. So you kick up, hold a really good freestanding handstand, so that's working that top position. You slowly come down, pass through the straddle, articulate the spine down, and finish with tiptoes on the floor. So there's the eccentric, and then the partial range. You start on some blocks, go up to your handstand, hold with control, again, you're practicing that top position, then you slowly lower that partial range until you can come off the floor. But obviously, if you don't have the bottom, if you don't have the top, if you need to work on the concentric and the full range of motion, you're gonna to have to have four different exercises and the relevant mobility to equal those. But most people are looking at two to four exercises plus flexibility. But the eccentric is a great assessment to see where your gaps are to identify the movements that you need to work on. Okay, number two, how to get more reps in a handstand push-up. Now that's gonna be dependent on certain things. So we have strength, we have balance, and we have the skill of the movement. Now understanding the skill is a big thing if you already can do a handstand push-up, because if I understand how to use overbalance to help me out of the bottom, it's gonna make it 10 times easier. It's the reason I can do 10 to 15 handstand push-ups in a row, and someone who's just as strong as me can do one handstand push-up. So understanding how to use the overbalance, have very good balance, you can equal way more handstand push-ups. But we also just need to check that you are strong enough as well. So for the strength component, I would be working five repetitions so we need to work out which skill variation or progression towards the handstand push-up. You can constantly do five repetitions times four to five sets. That's gonna take care of any strength gaps. So that could be chest wall handstand push-ups. It could be pike push-ups. Just work out what progression you need to get those repetitions. You don't wanna be falling out of those because it's important we get the strength work. Balance can be identified by a slow eccentric and we can work the full range of motion. So I would go to a deficit, ideally freestanding handstand push-up, as slow as possible. That's gonna feel all the balance work. Then the skill is like I say, understanding how to use the overbalance to get you out. If you're not very good at that, crow to handstand will be your friend. But obviously again, that depends a lot on what your current level of handstand push-up is, whether it's already a deficit for one or two reps, or if you're struggling to get a full range head to floor at the moment. Okay, next question, kind of vague, but how can I not get stuck on a handstand? So I'm not quite sure what you're getting stuck with. Now it could be because you don't, don't know what to work on. So most people need to work on their overbalance and their underbalance, which equals balance window. So that's nice and easy. We just do back to wall, chest to wall drills and make sure that we have, can pull off the wall for repetitions. We can pull off the wall and hold. We can slowly make that balance window bigger and bigger. You need to work on your kick up or jump consistency. So that could be lightly kissing the wall. It could be freestanding into that balance window. And if you're a little bit more advanced, we need to start to work and get very good at tuck and straddle handstands. So if you've got a tuck, straddle, and a straight handstand, you've got good overbalance and underbalance, and you have a kick up that's consistent, then you're in a good place. 
If you're newer than all of that, then you need to start with the conditioning holds. So that could be on the floor or things like chest to wall holds. Obviously it's tricky to answer that without a lot more information. Okay, now I'm not 100% sure on this one as well, but when you want to do a pike handstand static hold, so your legs in the air slightly away from the floor, do it require internal shoulder rotation during the hold or external shoulder rotation. So I'm assuming you mean like a pike toe float. So the start of a like a pike press handstand maybe, we just float the toes off slightly. Now I always talk about external rotation when it comes to pushing away and making a strong foundation, but I'm also a fan of not overcomplicating things. So I wouldn't be trying to work out what muscles you're using, what's happening at joints and things like that. The main thing we wanna be focusing on is the drill itself, the skill of the movement, and making sure that we're doing the right progressions for us. So to get that float off the floor, we need to have our hip in the correct position. So just on the top of our hands, we need to have a strong push into the floor. So normally that is a bit of external rotation, hands a little bit wider than our normal handstand position and a slightly rounded upper back position. If you're a little bit tighter, that's gonna be a bit more planchy. And again, the planchy position is always external rotation and just pushing the floor away as hard as you can. Okay, next question, how to train through uh, with injuries, for instance, wrist and golfer's elbow. Thanks, Paul. So normally I would decrease something. We need to take some stuff away. You're giving your body too much. Stuff's getting stuck. I made a specific video on this. So number one, decrease some volume on everything. Lay out everything you've been doing. Normally pain occurs when we're trying to do too many goals at once. Normally it's bent arm pulling, bent arm pushing, maybe combined with straight arm strength as well. And we're trying to do all of those things at a very high level. So I would back off on one or two of those things and maybe only work on one to two skills. For example, if we're doing lots of work like this, so we're doing planches, handstands and things, but we're also doing false grip pulling where we're trying to go into a real tight flex position. That's putting lots of stress on the wrists and the elbows, the forearms, both in flexion and extension. So that would be the first thing to do. Have a look at everything, check you're not doing too much. Back off on some of it if you are. Increase in rest and recovery, and normally increase in mobility. Now it might be not mobility around this area if you've got pain here. It could be mobility in the upper back. It could be mobility in the pelvis, in the hips. So head to toe mobility can normally help as well. But like I said, I've got a specific video on that where I go through a lot more detail. Okay, one arm handstand question. How to stop hips rotating in a one arm handstand? It only happens on one side and I can't stop it happening. So when we rotate or fall out of position in a one arm handstand, it's normally because the base, the hands, the elbow, the shoulder, and even the head position isn't in the correct position for the one arm handstand and the hips and the legs try and compensate. So they'll either try and reach more sideways. So you, instead of seeing this leg come down into the one arm handstand or into that more flag position, it will reach out and that will separate the head and the shoulder and it'll make everything go long or it will rotate. Or the other thing you'll see happen is when you're like this with your straddle, this top leg will start to close the straddle or bend because it's trying to encourage you to go that way. So the simple way to fix this is just to back off very, very slightly with the progression. So if you're on one finger support, go to two finger support. If you're on two finger support, go to five fingers, something like that, just back off to an easier progression, get more conditioning time there, and then slowly come away from that position. But number one, check what's happening at the base. So are you, does it look like this? Are you in a really good position or does it look more like this? Are you sort of doing a two arm handstand on that side and it's not pushed over enough? The hip, look where the sacrum is, relevant to the shoulder, to the hand, all three of those things should be stacked. If you're in a good one arm handstand position, you're probably out somewhere, so your body's compensating. And it can also just be a lack of conditioning, so more repetitions. Uh, the other thing to check is that the shoulders are in line. So when you you go up onto fingertips, both shoulders should stay in line. We shouldn't have one shoulder higher than the other. That will also cause rotation. So video yourself from the back, check it, especially to, uh, compared to the other side that isn't rotating, you'll normally see a difference and that are normally just backing off to an easier progression for more repetitions will work. Okay, when performing advanced tuck or any plans progression, is it okay that your hips are higher than your shoulder? Um, I personally prefer this. My uh, planche positions maybe sometimes go a little bit too high just because I spend too much time in like press handstand variations. But I prefer them to be a little bit higher because if you're doing reps and sets of say 10 second holds, when you get uh, five seconds into it, your hips are gonna drop a little bit as you get tired. Now, if your hips and shoulders are perfectly aligned, if these are the hips and this is the shoulders, as soon as you get tired, 
your hip is now underneath your shoulder and you're dragging it up and you're more likely to lose protraction. So I would set up with your hips very slightly higher than your shoulders and then as the time goes on for your hold, it will slowly decrease the height. You do have to be careful that it's not like a press handstand and the hips are very high. Okay, how close should your pushing foot be to your hands before the kick up? So I would really focus on the base first because this is gonna be a little bit different for everyone in terms of limb length, flexibility, strength, things like that. But I would set up that base very strong for you. So hands on the floor, focal point, shoulders on top of the hands, and then just find a natural position where you don't feel like your flexibility is really restricting you. But the same thing, we don't wanna to be too far away so we're flattening the hip too much. So I would just find a comfortable position where the hands, the shoulders, and the focal point feel comfortable and then as you kick, they can stay in position. If when you kick, your shoulders are being pushed forwards or backwards, it normally means that back foot in the wrong place. Or another way to test it is just do a few kick ups, either freestanding to the wall, depending on what level you're at, and then just come down comfortably, keeping the shoulders on top of the hands and see where that foot comes to. Like I said, it's gonna be different for everyone, but you wanna feel a comfortable position that's not too flat and that's not too squished. Okay, next one. So how to get my legs from staying in under balance to be in one line with the rest of the body. My legs are staying in under balance and pulling me out of the handstand. A simple way of controlling the handstand, if our feet are staying behind in more of an underbalanced position and we keep falling down, what it means is if, we're, if our hands are there, our shoulders are here and our head is there, we're like that, our feet are in this position. So we're over here somewhere. So what it means is we're always gonna fall down in that direction because I have this as my center line. I have too much mass, too much energy on this side of the handstand, not enough on that side. But a simple way of controlling that is to do this and have the shoulders slightly planched there like that. Now the head is there and I'm controlling the underbalanced position and you know I like this type of handstand. So now this is equal in that, so this one is gonna stay balanced there like that. This one's always gonna fall down. And then a simple way of correcting this is to move the feet in slightly, move the shoulder in slightly, and then you have a straighter line. So if they both go in at the same time, but to do that, we need a good connection between the shoulders and the feet. So I would be practicing lots of underbalance control, like the toe pull drill, the chest wall pulling off the wall into your handstand like that. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna strengthen this position so you can actually catch this because it's gonna look more like that. And then you can slowly push up to your handstand. So in that direction, so the feet come in, the shoulders come in, and then you get a balanced handstand that's straight. But you also have the option of catching this now because you can take the shoulder forwards. Okay, what do you think about practicing handstand in the sand? Sand makes it feel easier and safer, but I think it's not good for the wrists. Yeah, I've done loads of handstands in the beach. I live very close to the beach, so me and the kids are down there all the time playing. Um, I actually take handstand blocks when I go to the beach and push the handstand block into the floor. That's much more preferable in terms of balance and you're right, the wrists. It's a bit like practicing on gymnastic floor where they're really spongy. It's really gonna push you past the 90 degree position for the wrists. Um, I much prefer a harder surface. So I personally wouldn't do that much practice on the sand, but it does have the benefit if you're scared to kick up to freestanding, it gives you that safety and you can play around with there. But I would do that with some play and not with your working set. So I definitely wouldn't do a training session at the beach. And as I wouldn't recommend doing a training session on grass, one way to do it is to take a board or something with you that gives you a good surface, but you also have the sand around you as safety. That's good on grass as well if you can find like a path next to grass, handstand on the path, but fall onto the grass. Then you get the best of both worlds. You have the firmer surface for your hands, but you have the safety of the sand or the grass if you fall over. Okay, best progressions for strengthening over and under balance when you have a very small window of balance for handstand, but have good strength when it's sweet spot to hold for 10 plus seconds. Okay, to increase that window of balance, we just wanna be working the back to wall heel pull drill. So we're pushing through the fingers for our over balance. We're reaching up into the handstand and going back again. First for repetitions and then for repetitions of holds. So you can pull away, hold for two or three seconds, go back to the wall. Pull away, hold for five to 10 seconds, go back to the wall. Make that very consistent until you can get a heel pull to 30 seconds. At the same time, do exactly the same thing with toe pulls. Make sure you can pull with your shoulders away from the wall into your handstand from the underbalance. Again, first for repetitions and then go to holds and then eventually holds for like 20, 30 seconds. 
Once you can hold for 20, 30 seconds, both from the toe pull and from the heel pull, then when you go into a freestanding handstand, you're gonna find your window of balance gets bigger and bigger. The cool thing with the wall drills as well, you can slowly move your hands further and further away. So it's like you're increasing the window of balance that you're working and you can choose to try and hold more in overbalance when you're back to wall and then when you're chest to wall you can choose to hold slightly in underbalance so leaning slightly back towards the wall but you're not actually touching the wall and then you're purposely on the edge of your window of balance which is going to make it stronger and stronger and eventually then make it wider and wider okay what is the easiest version of the handstand to aim for first straight tuck split legs so for most people, it's gonna be more like a banana type handstand. So it's gonna be kicking up to the wall, finding more of an efficient, comfortable position where you've got enough push to keep it as one piece, but not too much push. So it's stopping you breathing and you're like this holding the handstand. It might look like a straight line, but you can't hold there for any time. So a relaxed-ish straight handstand, which is gonna be a bit more bananaed, is gonna have the feet slightly apart, but that's gonna be your best handstand. And then over time, it will slowly straighten and become even more stronger one segment that's efficient and you can breathe and show control in a straight handstand. Okay, how to train shoulders without rotator cuff hurt. Okay, so if we want to train safely and we don't want to get injuries like rotator cuff issues and things like that, we need to make sure that we've got two things. We need to make sure that we've got the strength and the conditioning to do the right levels that we're trying to do. So the progressions or the skills or the exercises, we need to be strong enough for that current level. So we want to be able to do clean repetitions of the skills we're working towards or the drills that we're doing. We also need to make sure that we've got the flexibility and the mobility to get into the position. So if I wanna take my hands above my head, but I'm stuck in my upper back and I can't reach my hands up, if I try and rip into the shoulders now and then load, I'm, oh, I'm just not gonna make any progress. I'm just gonna to compensate too much for the rest of the body. So I need to make sure that I'm doing enough upper body mobility, things like hanging, thoracic rolling, stretching my pecs, stretching my lats. Start with easier exercises and then progressively increase the time the intensity and improve the flexibility and mobility. So look at any of the exercises that you wanna do, make sure that you can do good five to 10 clean repetitions with good technique, without pain, and that's gonna tell you you're in a really good place. Do that for a bit and then slowly increase the progressions and the intensity. Listen to your body and you should be fine. Okay, I can't get chest to bar pull-ups, can do 10 normal pull-ups, what is the next step? So the hardest thing for getting your chin over the bar to so getting the bar to touch your chest is normally flexibility and lack of conditioning of that range. So you can work on the flexibility, so you can stretch your pecs and your lats to try and open this position up even more. But in terms of training, what I would do is I would do a, your standard pull up, but have a box in front of you. Pull as high as you can, then step on the box, lift yourself up with the assistance of your foot till your chest touches the bar, then see if you can hold, take your foot back off, hold for about five to 10 seconds, and then slowly come down through the eccentric. So then you're doing your standard pull up, plus the box assist, reach up to the bar, put your chest on the bar, hold, and then slowly come down again. If that's too hard, keep your toes on the box and hold there for time. So work up to around 30 to 45 seconds per set, holding with your chest on the bar. And after a few weeks, you'll be able to do chest to bar. How to progress from tuck plants to advanced tuck and how to avoid the hips from going higher than the shoulders. Okay, so with number one, we need to make sure that you know the progressions from standard tuck to advanced tuck. So the difference between them is massive. So don't think you go from your standard tuck to advanced tuck in one session. I think there's like 20 different increments between them. So just think knees to chest is your tight tuck. Knees in line with hips is advanced tuck and every degree of the hip flexion or extension between them is a next progression. So slowly open up bit by bit. You might need to use band assist to start to feel the position. And I do a mixture of both. I do some without the band and some with the band. So you can start to feel the position with a little bit of assistance and or pyramid your time. So if you're doing a tight tuck and you're holding it for like 12, 15 seconds, then you can start go play with the advanced tuck with like five to six second holds. In terms of trying to keep the hip level with the shoulder, obviously video yourself so you're getting lots of feedback and also work things like planche slides, planche walk-ins, where you're really focusing on that hip and shoulder connection, keeping them nice and level. And also those band assist will help because they can put yourself in advanced position, play around with it a little bit and keep checking that video to see the hip is staying in the shoulder position. So that's all the questions answered. If you're after coaching, check out my app, links are down in the description. I'll do another one of these in a few weeks time. Let me know if you have any video requests down in the comments and I'll speak to you in the next one. Thanks guys.